Hey everybody, we're coming to you from Iowa today. We uh, out here working, trying to get a few things wrapped up. We decided to get some drywall, professional drywallers in here to, to put up the drywall, uh, simply because of the time it'd take us to do it. And we'd like to get in the house sometime this decade. So they're gonna be here in a couple of days and that means we have a, a bunch of little stuff we need to fix, uh, get ready for. Uh, I need to make sure all the outlets are in place, uh, all the penetrations are in place so they can uh, uh, account for those in the drywall and get a few odds and ends on the alignment of studs to, uh, to take care of. Anyway, what uh, we're we'll talking about today is the installation of a ceiling brace kit. So we'll take a look at that uh, in this uh, video today. Uh, come along and we'll, uh, we'll get to messing around. This is the Hubble uh, Rayco ceiling brace kit. You can see it there. Get a good close up to it. This is intended for retrofitting into an existing uh, ceiling. But I figured uh, we'll show it to you here and without uh, the ceiling in place get you Give you an idea of how it goes in and uh, how it works, and um, it's a little easier to see without the drywall in, in front of it. Now, unboxing this kit, it's got just a few parts in it. got the bar itself. This bar has uh, a couple of feet on it and it's got a little uh, thing here that goes up against the stud. It's got three prongs in it to go into the wood to hold it up. Same thing on the other end and uh, and this end unscrews. That expands to go up against the joint to fit it in place and hold it tight. A little bracket here that goes around the bar, like that. And to that we attach this can. The uh, ceiling fan will attach to that. And that will attach to the brace, and the brace will attach to the bar, and the bar will attach to the house, and everybody's happy. In addition to that, we have some uh, hardware, a little bag of nuts and bolts. It goes one thimble here for wire to go through the box. We get a couple of long bolts here that go in there that uh, holds the ceiling fan in place. That's for the bracket on the ceiling fan. We have four small bolts. That is to hold the can onto the brace under that bracket. And then we got a little grainy here. That is for the ground wire. It goes into the uh, into the can. We'll do what we can on the can down here on the floor before uh, getting up uh, top side and that means putting in a few of these bolts and knocking out a plug in the back of that can for the electric wire and putting that thimble in place. First thing we need to do is get a uh, punch and knock out one of these punch outs. Now you don't necessarily need a punch <clears throat> to punch this out. Just anything that's hard enough and will knock, uh, knock on this hard enough to go through. And it's best if you have a little backing, solid backing behind it. You hit it real hard like that and it uh, punches out. It's supposed to do that. It's supposed to break off fairly easy. Just bend it a little bit back and forth and it falls out just like that. This thimble is designed to go in from the front or from the bottom, from inside the can. Just uh, put it in a little hole that you made and push it in. It snaps in place and the electric wire will come up through that and into the inside. Next thing we need to do is on this brakes, on this bracket, we're gonna take a couple of these small ones and you wanna look here may not be able to see it, but you want to look here on the brace and there's a, a hole here that's labeled keyhole. You want to put a bolt in there 
and screw it down a little bit. One of the short bolts, not a long one. And on the opposite or opposing hole, it's marked keyhole also, put that bolt in there. And these will fit into the keyholes that are in the can. And if we, as an example, fits in there and it fits in there and they lock up when you put it up there and that helps hold them in place while you get the other bolts in. We're also going to mount these long uh, mounting bolts while we're here on the floor and it goes in the, uh, the hole that fits. We've got two holes on a flat here. One of them these bolts will fit, the other it won't. That's for the uh, mounting the flange on uh, the box screw when the uh, ceiling fan comes in there'll be a little cover that goes over there and you'll mount into that. Put the ground lug into that recessed, the bolt hole in that recessed flat. And these other two bolts we'll pick up off the floor and put in our pocket for when we need them upstairs. One thing you'll want to do while you're on the floor is pre uh, pre-extend this to uh, approximately the right position. You'll notice that on this end there's a little cross, a little Phillips head uh, place there where you can put a Phillips head screwdriver. We get our screwdriver, electric screwdriver, the DeWalt screwdriver. This is a 14.4 volt. I've had this about 12 years. Works like a champ. Really like that product. Put it in there and we'll unscrew it. And you can see it unscrews a good ways. Now there is supposed to be, and I don't see one on this one, so shame on them. They quality control messed up on this one. There's supposed to be a red dot in these in these there's supposed to be a red dot in these threads. One along in here. Uh, so it, when you're close to 16 inch, you'll know not to go too far. And one along in here. So when you're close to 24 inch, you'll know not to go too far. Well, there's not one there and we're just about gone too far. So um, so we'll have to do something else on this. That's why you watch these things, to learn what, uh, what to do when things don't work right. So we know this is supposed to be 24 inches on center, the rafters up there. And that means it's 24 minus an inch and a half between the facing edges of that. So this here, we're now measuring 20, right at 24 inches. Uh, between the two ends. That's going to be too long. So we need to take it up, we need to screw it in about an inch and a half so that it'll fit between the posts or rather between the uh, joists. That brings us down to about 23 inches, a little more. And that'll get us down to about 22 and a half, which is where we want it. We'll do this here on the floor because it saves it's a lot easier down here. It saves a lot of time when we get on top. So let's go up top and see what we got. Okay, we're back again. These are the joists I'm looking for. And we want them 12 inches away from this cross, cross uh, joist. So we'll come out here and measure 12 inches. On that side. And 12 inches from that side. Now we'll take this brace that we worked with downstairs, set it up here, and it's it's a little too long. So we're gonna screw it in. So we get us a little room. 
and then we'll kind of hold it there while we unscrew it. Now we want, this is 12 inches, this is where we want the center of the bar. These little feet here are designed to go on drywall. It'll be drywall on your ceiling here and these are intended to, to go there, to go on that drywall just initially while to hold, to keep uh, the threaded piece in place, keep it from turning, keep it from spinning while you tighten it up. Well, since it's not there, since we don't have drywall in place, we're just going to have to do that by hand. And we come, I'll kind of hold that in place and on the side of the side. We'll line up the center of the bar, center of the beam with the 12 inch mark that we wanted. And we just start unscrewing this until it gets fairly tight. And we'll position this about right there. That lets the uh, that lets these prongs grow go into the wood as we tighten it further. Now we slipped over here. So we loosen it up till we can turn it. And we tighten it up so it'll stay. Now as you tighten it up, it's going to spread these beams for these uh, ceiling joists apart. Uh, probably not going to be a problem in uh, existing construction. I mean, that's in there pretty tight. I can pull on it. I'm not going to hang from it. But I can pull on it fairly, fairly well, and it's going to hold. But I still see a little space between the ends here. And since we can, just because we can, we're in this position, I'm going to hammer and try and set those prongs fully into the wood. And that looks good. So now the, these prongs are fully seated into the wood and that's probably as tight as it's going to get. The scaffolding is a little shaky so if it moves around some, it's not you, it really is the camera and me moving around. So now we're going to install this box. We've got this bracket on the bar and we'll move it where we want the uh, the bar to be. We went, and we're going to hang this now right here and then the ceiling fan will hang from this from this box. It'll hang down right here. So we want this centered, not necessarily centered, we want it to be where we want that ceiling fan to hang. In this case though, I do want it fairly centered. And we take the measurement and that is there and we have right there is center and that's good enough. Now these screws are in there fairly loose. We didn't tighten them all the way down. And we didn't do that for a reason. That's so that it's easier to get the box on the screws. Plenty of wiggle room to play with. So now we're going to tighten them down a bit. Not completely. We still want some, some giveaway in there because we got a couple more screw holes to line up. And if we tighten them down completely, they're not going to line up. So we grab one of these screws, sorry, bolt and we'll fit it into this hole and get it started in there and then we'll grab the other one get it started in the bracket and then we're going to tighten them down Things can have a tendency to shift when you're messing with them. So we're going to check the measurement make sure it's still where we want it. Grab our tape measure. Measure between and it is exactly where we want it. Now we're bringing the circuit in from here. We got 
several ceiling fans. They're all going to be remote controlled. We're not going to have switches for them. They're all going to operate only by the remote control. And so we're going to hardwire this circuit directly to the panel. These ceiling fans, we got three of them in this room. They're all going on the same circuit. They draw 80 to 100 watts uh, a piece. Uh, they can all three go on the same 15 amp circuit. That's not going to be a problem. In fact, we may connect that to the circuit for the south wall because the receptacles along the south wall are not going to be heavily used. And so um, uh, just uh, let's say 100 watts, that's about one amp per uh, ceiling fan when they're going at full blast. That's on high with all the lights on. Uh, so that's about three amps added to the circuit. Um, we don't really have anything else going on that circuit, so we'll probably tie them into the south wall circuit and uh, save us uh, space in, in, the, uh, in the breaker box. So to get it here, I got two other boxes installed along the wall and I've pressed the, uh, the wires from them and I'm working back to the box. And because we got this open space, it's really easy to run the wires overhead. A lot of times you'll use fishing tape to run the wires or uh, sometimes those little plastic or fiberglass screw-in rods that you put together and push them down through the wall and, and uh, pull, the wire, pull the wire through. Well, don't really have all that. What we got here and what's working good enough for us is a piece of PVC pipe. So I took some PVC pipe and taped the wire to it with electrical tape and then pushed it over here from the other side, from that other box. Nice and rigid, it goes where you push it, usually. Doesn't cause much of a problem. And it carries that wire real well. So here's the wire we're coming over from the other box. And it needs to go in here. We put that thimble in there. Remember that, uh, had that piece of metal we punched out? And it's... We just put it in there plain, uh, that rough edge rub up against that insulation could cause problems. That's why I got that thimble in there. So we're going to push this in from the back side. And it has a strain relief on it so that it can't go back. It's got a kind of a, uh, a couple of pieces of plastic that pinch down when the wire comes through, it spreads them apart. They close up on the wire. So if anybody's out there yanking on this, it's not going to pull loose. Unfortunately, that works pretty good because the wire I want to tie this into is over there in the blue box with another one of those pinch clamps on it. It would be real nice if I could just reach over there, grab that wire and yank on it and bring it over here, tie it in. But I can't, so what we're going to do is see if we can get a ladder over there and um, pull that out. If I can't pull it out easy enough, I'll cut it. Okay, we're back. Uh, I didn't pull that out of, the, uh, of that other box, of that electrical box, because I was on top of the ladder. That's in the same place where I fell last year and broke a bunch of ribs. And uh, because it's dizzying the spells I'm having, I guess. When I'm on top of the ladder, I tend to hang on and don't do a lot of pushing and pulling. And uh, working one-handed just didn't really have the right position, right purchase to pull that out of the box. So I cut it. And this is it. And we're going to run this. We want to make sure that we're going over all of the rafters and not over and under a couple. but. Went over the over the rafters. We're going to run this right through that same hole, and it's going to be hard because it's supposed to be. Now we got these two in there, and I want to label this one here. This one's going straight to the breaker box. I want to label that so when I get up in here, I know what I'm working with.
and we'll make sure that this continues on where it needs to go and we'll push it over so we don't have anything hanging down here we'll push it over there to, to help hold it now one thing I'm in a big favor of is putting things like this in place and that's just a real simple strain relief it's just a little loop tied around looped around something that's not going to move easy and that's so that if somebody's back there yanking on this like I will be shortly trying to hook it into the circuit that it doesn't pull it too hard too far and mess up what's coming into the box here if I pull on it and it's hard to pull it doesn't come doesn't give easily I'm going to assume we're tied up, hooked up here, and not pull any further. Otherwise, we might pull this out of line. Could even pull it off. Don't want that. No. Anyhow, that's, uh, that's how you install one of these braces. Uh, we're going to leave it like that for the drywallers to get to. They'll come in here and they'll drywall around it, over it, and then cut it out. And uh, then when they get finished, we'll come in here and we'll install a ceiling fan. And that'll be another video. Hit that notification bell. That way you'll be sure and catch it. And hit that subscription button. That way you know when we put something else out there. So for now, that's good enough. See you later.